This is the Wii Zapper, and this is a gun. Can you spot the difference? This little fella dropped in late 2007 in the US of A, and guess what it came bundled with? That's right, a Legend of Zelda game. But a history on this piece of plastic is not why we're here today. We're here to talk about a game that uses it, Black Ops 1. Released on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PC, Wii, and the Nintendo DS in November of 2010. Now, the Wii and DS version are very special because, well, the hardware was definitely not up to date. I mean, the Wii is basically a GameCube with motion controls. So, if you really think about it, and have the technical skills to do it, you could play Black Ops on the GameCube. So come along with me as we venture down this pixely rabbit hole. As we open up the game, we come face to face with, uh, uh, uh hmm. You know, this, this looks oddly familiar. Huh. Anyways, let's take a look around, shall we? As most of you know, in the Black Ops menu, you can get out of the chair to walk around. On a regular controller, all you need to do is rapidly mash the bumpers, and presto, you are out. Well, on the Wii, you violently shake the controller around like a f***ing jackass until you are free from your binds. Now we can walk around and- oh god, oh, oh it, is this how we're gonna be controlling this? Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Let's just head over to the computer. Here we can do random things like, uh, uh, reading your email, I guess. Oh, oh, and, and you can play Zork, which happens to be an exciting typing adventure. But enough about the computer. You want to get into the meat of things, don't you? <laughs> okay, well... Let's sit back in our silly little chair, and I will show you the lovely campaign that is Black Ops 1. We open the first mission with our friend Mason here getting a little bit of electroshock therapy, while the funny shadow people ask him questions. Mason seems to be afraid of math, so they shock him when he gets the answer wrong. What is six times two? Kiss my ass! This happens to spark some memories of Mason's time in the war. Fading in, we see- OH MY <sighs> GOODNESS! Woods, what the hell did they do to your poor face? It's like they took an iron and just left it on there for too long or something. Anyways, we have a nice little chat about some guy named Castro, and soon the local authorities come and insult the nearest woman they can find. Mr. Woods wasn't a fan of that, being the lady respecter that he is, and rightfully stabs the gentleman in the hand. The four spring into action, and Woods shows off a tactical slide as we make our way out to the street. Finally, get to see some real action, and uh, oh, oh wow, the controls, they're. Oh, god damn it, I can't. What the hell? Hold left on the D pad and tap left with the control stick? What kind of batch controls are... Okay. Okay. You've played through the campaign like ten times already. You can do this. Mason, Woods, and Bowman fight their way through the streets. They find a conveniently placed car in a nearby alleyway, which makes Woods scream with joy. A few ran over cops later, and we make it back to Mason at his tutoring lessons. He starts to OD on his shock therapy, which makes him hallucinate his time back in Cuba once again. After taking a fun zipline trip, we strangle a guy, taking a phone call, and then make our way towards the fellow named Castro. Some sick-ass slow-mo shots puts us right outside the bedroom of our Cuban friend. 
A bullet between the eyes and a dead lady later. Crazy bitch! We begin to make our escape. Running through the compound and almost dying a few times, our team makes it to the getaway plane. Just like a badass action movie, we start blowing up everything in sight. But it seems like the runway is blocked. So Mason, being the chat that he is, jumps off to clear the runway. Mason jumps off to clear the... Oh, for fuck. Mason jumps off and clears the runway for his team. But proceeds to get kidnapped in the process by a zombie Castro in some creepy Russian. I have plans for you, American. All right. Mission one is complete. Only 14 more to go. Okay. Mason starts to recall his time in the Russian prison camp for Kuda. We get to meet Mason's new friend named Reznov as he gives us a friendly punch to the face. After the fight, all hell breaks loose. We now start Reznov's eight-step plan to escape the prison. Slashing a few guards and meeting this tall glass of water. We ascend up the elevator watching Sergei do what he does best. Mason, Reznov, and Sergei use a minecart for cover as I struggle to shoot and move at the same time. Can you guys wait a second? Successfully making it to safety makes Reznov very happy that he repeats his excitement. We will be free! Or die crying! We will be free! Or die. Getting to the top of the armory, we happen to use a crossbow instead of a slingshot. Interesting choice. We grab ourselves a shotgun and get ourselves killed for good luck. In our attempt to leave this hell in a cell, our poor friend Sergei loses his fight against a door. But no time to mourn, we gotta get this motherfucking minigun, baby! Oh yeah! Shredded Russian tonight, my friends! Sadly, minigun time is short-lived due to an exposure to tear gas. Waking up reveals that Reznov happens to have two sick-ass bikes. We pull a lever action from out of the void and begin blasting more Russians while trying not to die. Borrowing a truck from the enemies allows us to make our departure. Unfortunately, we gotta leave our boy behind. But not to worry. This will not be the last time we see him. Coming back, the tutors are not pleased with Mason's answers, so they move on to another topic. The time Mason took a field trip to see the Pentagon. We meet this bald guy with glasses named Hudson. Even get to take a cool limo ride with some nerd. Mason is asked to kill some guy, which seems a little much for a day at the Pentagon, but we'll just go with it for now. Got to see a lady who wouldn't stop staring at us, and even got to see their underground World of Warcraft land party. Soon Mason gets sat down in a room to meet the one and only. John F. Kennedy. After a great conversation, I like your funny words, Mr. Mason. I pretend to shoot him because I thought it would be funny. He was not a fan. Meeting up with our pal Woods again, we take a look at the SpaceX facility as we see someone we happen to recognize with, I think, Elon? Elon does some eye surgery on the fella, but Woods don't like that. Mason and Woods find some sharply dressed Russians. Wanting their clothes so badly, Mason decides to make some scrambled brains so the two can have the best drip. Taking a nice walk around the compound leads to a firefight, mostly due to jealousy. Mason gets to the roof and whips out the trusty crossbow again. A few blown up trucks later, Mason ziplines to the rescue and saves Weaver. Now sporting a stylish new eye patch, the team heads towards the SpaceX rocket to stop it from launching to Mars. With a short five minute countdown, they make it to the control room, but it seems that it's too late. Well, thank God there's a rocket launcher right here. With seconds to spare, the rocket blows up and Mars is safe another day. Elon wasn't too happy about that, so the gang fight their way through the underground tunnels of the facility, keeping their heads intact. Weaver, being so excited, he shares his lunch with everyone. Finding ourselves back at our math lessons, the Shadow Tutors show Mason how stupid he looks and it makes him real upset. What do you want from me? In his anger, he tells the story of his time back in Nam. Okay, oh hey, it's that bald guy Hudson again and oh god, copyright! 
Reuniting with our friend Woods again, we decide to insult him straight to his face. Woods, you look like hammered shit. Is it really an insult if it's true? We take a short jeep ride out on the tarmac, which causes the plane to crash. Nice going. Hudson scrapes his knee, so Mason has to carry him far enough so he can heal. I'm okay. They are soon in an all-out battle, weaving through trenches and blowing up some tanks along the way. This leads us to a hill that we have to descend down. So I'm sure most of you have noticed by now that the Wii is kind of chugging along a bit. Especially during very big battle sequences. I mean, if you could hear what my Wii sounds like right now, it sounds like a goddamn fax machine. Look at this man right here. He was so shocked about what he was seeing, he just froze in fear. Even death would not soothe his poor mind. Anyways, we make it down the hill just to go right back up another one. Woods almost dies, but I had the big iron on me, so no worries there. Mason, Woods, and Hudson hop in a jeep with a big-ass rocket launcher attached at the back. And guess what the objective is now? Yes, blowing up more tanks! Successfully warding off the enemies, Woods parks in a handicapped spot, and Bowman comes out of nowhere to insult us one last time. You look like hammered shit, Mason. Fast forwarding a bit, the crew are now flying in on a Huey. They attempt to repel out of the chopper, which does not seem like the best idea. But let's see where this goes. Oops, they got shot down. Not to worry, because Woods and Mason bust into the nearest building, and Woods snaps the neck of the closest guy he can find while taking his gun that happens to be loaded with God's ammunition. Dragon's Breath Rounds. Pumping some hot, fiery lead into some enemies and cooking them to a wonderful medium-rare delight, Bowman decides to help us with the dish by mincing up some enemies to add to the pot. Can't have a good meal without some civilian either. Walking down this hallway, we run into a door that seems to be locked, so Mason kicks down the door, which angers the locals. Thank goodness Reznov was here to talk some sense into the guy. Mason catches up with Reznov, but he seems to not want to look at us in the face. I hope we didn't make him mad or something. Mason is so scared of what's going on, he steals a man's brick phone to call 911. However, Mason remembers that he's in a third world country, so they just send in a helicopter instead. Our own tank gets blown up, so we blow up theirs in return, then start heading inside because, <laughs> wow, it's getting a little crazy out here. Unfortunately, there was something blocking the entrance, and there was another tank heading towards us. Luckily, one of our teammates jumps in the way to protect us from the car barreling at us. After this, Mason delivers a package and makes his way to the extraction point. Fending off the enemies with a few claymores to our name, we hold off just long enough so Woods can jump into the escape boat really slowly. Getting back to our math lessons, the tutors are getting really bored of Mason's stories, so they tell him a story of their own about Weaver as well as Hudson. We open up with Weaver bullying some nerd named Clark with a bunch of weird writing on his face. These random dudes start to attack us, but first we gotta blow up some barrels so I can grab my 80s mixtape. Making our way up to the roof, we need to cross to the next building. Of course, the only way to get over is to jump. God damn it. Not a problem, we just gotta go again and oh for the love of- Okay, all I need is a good head start and there we go. Clark shows us his secret stash of weapons. While he does this, I put my mix in so I can listen to some tunes, only to find that this big gun just phases through the wall. Alright, I'll, I'll pick that up. It seems pretty cool. But, uh, hmm, what should I have for my secondary? Lots of options here. Yeah, 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 RPG. RPG is good. Something interesting about the Thunder Gun on the Wii version is that you can reload it without shooting all the shots first. Just thought you guys needed to know. Clark has us follow him to the next location as we lay waste to every Russian coming our way. Unfortunately, I run out of ammo with a thunder gun, so I pick up a Caprice. Cap, cap, Caprice? Ca cap, Caprice? Caprice. Yeah. This guy was pretty offended by that, so uh, he tried to confront me about it. That conversation did not go well. We escape down this pipe, and I almost break my ankle in the process. After a short firefight, we defend Clark while he gets a door open. If 
finally getting it open, we run and oh man, another jump. Okay, I've done this plenty of times. F me. Four attempts later, we make it across just to lose the guy to a bullet. What a waste. Dying a few more times due to jumping, we action slide our way down the ramp as a party bus rolls up in to pick us up. Okay, this is starting to be way longer than I thought it would. Uh, I mean, shit, we still got like five more missions. And I still gotta cover zombies and multiplayer too. So, we're just gonna power through the rest of this. Because at this point, I'm considering taking a nice, lovely bath with my toaster. So, the mission opens up, and we are in Reznov's secret underground basement that he said not to tell anyone about. He begins to recall his time in the war, all the way back in 1945 with his friend Dimitri. Looks like Rez used to be old pals with Mr. Musk and creepy Russian guy back in the day. They all go on a hunt for some old Nazi f named Steiner. Eventually finding him, he takes us to some nasty moldy boat for some reason. Turns out creepy Russian and Musk went to high school with this guy, so they all have been friends this whole time. Reznov was mad about it, and he just started screaming. <coughs> Not wanting to deal with Reznov and his friend, they throw him into a chamber, releasing a very stinky gas. Dimitri can't seem to handle it and dies. Before it affects Reznov, the British come to take the stinky toxins for themselves. Reznov fights his way through the boat and also plans to get a bomb because f those guys. He makes it off the boat safely and it goes oh, boom. boom. Reznov lives to see another day. Alright, next we find ourselves back in Nam on a sinking heli. Thank goodness Reznov is here to save the day. Man, this guy is everywhere. Woods, Mason, and Reznov gotta stealth swim their way through the swampy jungles of Nam. They find a few sleepy boys so they quietly dispose of them. Turns out this was just a big surprise party. Look at all these people. Hey, and maybe we got some fireworks. Now it's time to escape this party since it's getting a little out of control. Good thing there's this tunnel underground just for us. Woods gives us a party favor so we can still have a little fun in the tunnels. Some guy crashes the party by killing one of our friends, but that's okay because Reznov is here to cheer us up. Together we kill some more party crashers, which pisses them off, so they blow up the tunnel to get back at us. Making it out alive, Wood swoops in just in time to save us. Taking a short break, we return to the math lessons. The tutors tell Mason that Reznov is a bad influence on his grades, and it could prevent him from getting into a college of his choosing. Now this is probably my favorite opening to any mission. It's so action-packed, and it plays such a badass song with it too. So... We open up to, uh, is this the end of the boat? We're on the shore already. No good boat action scene, no sympathy for the devil by the Rolling Stones. You know what? Fine. Just means I get to beat the game sooner. Getting off the boat, we lead a crew through more jungle in search of some crashed airplane. Enemies ambush us from high and low, even some Russians join in the mix. Finally finding the plane, the group makes their way up to the main cargo bay. While searching, there's another ambush that results in almost everyone falling to their deaths. Then Mason gets kidnapped again. Man, someone should put a tracker on this guy or something. Next mission shows an astronaut getting into a cool plane thing. We fly it up to almost space and have to coordinate a ground team to infiltrate a base located on a snowy mountain. Once the squad is close enough, we possess one of the teammates, which happens to be Hudson. We rappel down this building so we can break through this window. I use telekinesis to throw a grenade to clear the room. It does nothing. This guy gets thrown over the edge and we make our way down to the main base. I get to use this crossbow, but god damn it, why is it so hard to aim with this thing? Oh, come on, get the other guy. Oh, got away. Great. Now everyone and their mothers are alerted, so we have to go loud. Getting inside, we kill some more guys along with some pharmacists. I find the main server, which has their fiber optic cables. This sends the whole place in disarray. Now we have to escape. This bridge explodes, meaning we... have to jump. Okay. Okay. 
Let's do this! <laughs> After five attempts, I make it across and we parachute down to safety. A firefight later and we make it to the main facility. Weaver takes some pics of our trip and then we get the hell out of there due to an avalanche. Now we get to see what happened to Mason and his friends. They get pulled out of their cages and sat down at a table. Bowman insults our host, which leads to his head being smashed in with a lead pipe. Woods is so shocked that he tries to kill himself, but then Mason thinks of a better idea. Taking the gun, he starts blasting away. Mason and Woods chase the host so they can speak with him about the matter. Making their way out, they decide to steal a helicopter. They cause mass destruction in the name of Bowman. Eventually, they land the helicopter and continue on foot. It sounds like they've found the location of Musk. On their way, they find a bunch of teammates along with you-know-who. Mason fights his way up to the room and gets into a scuffle with Musk. Woods comes to save the day, but explodes in the process. Reznov comes in so he can comfort Mason over his loss. Are you okay? Finding out that Musk is dead, Reznov screams with joy. After this, Reznov and Mason plan to finish off the old Nazi guy. They sneak into a container which also happens to be carrying some dangerous monkeys. They have to avoid being spotted by a chopper, so staking through the shadows is the best option. Safely making it to a ladder, Mason pulls a guy over the edge for pointing a gun at his face. The two make it inside and gun down everyone they can see. At last, they make it to the old Nazi guy. Reznov starts to yell at him over the whole high school thing and then promptly shoots him in the face. Flashing back 20 minutes earlier, we find that Hudson and Weaver are on the same island as Mason. How crazy is that? Apparently, they are also here to see the Nazi guy, but for different reasons. We get to ride this awesome tank car that has grenade launcher turrets. Sadly, it does not last long due to the island being filled with that stinky gas. What's terrible now is that I gotta aim down with this thing just to see anyone. I'm sure you all know how awful this is with the zapper. After what feels like forever, the guys get a well-deserved shower. They happen to come across all the dead bodies Mason created. Oh, hey, oh, what's going on, friend? You, uh, you doing the- HOLY sh- The crew make it to the door just as- No, no, Mason, Mason, what are you doing? No! Sadly, we cannot stop him in time. It was really Mason who killed the Nazi man? This, this can't be. But it seems to be true. It's revealed that Hudson and Weaver were the Shadow Tutors the whole time. Damn it! Hudson tells Mason that Reznov has been dead ever since the prison break. It was all just a ploy to make Mason bad at math. Mason, being enraged, punches Ooh. Hudson and roams the school halls looking for answers but just keep seeing pictures of Reznov. Eventually, Hudson catches up and returns the favor. This punch happens to trigger a turning point in Mason. Suddenly, he can remember the location of math and how to beat it. Mr. Hudson is very proud. We've made it. The last mission. It's come to this. All right, so we are in a helicopter. All oh, right, it is already crashing. I am okay with that. We made it to the math boat, and there are enemies everywhere. Picking up a rocket launcher, we have to blow up two choppers before we can make it to the lower deck. The team lay waste to even more enemies, while Hudson shows us how he has no idea how a door works. Turns out there's a super base deep underwater. This is where they created math. Mason knows what has to be done. Waves upon waves of enemies litter the facility. The team makes it to the control station, and look who it is. Creepy Russian guy. He is the creator of all of this. Mason takes out his rage and drowns him, ultimately ending this war. We have one last cutscene of JFK's day on the town, and hey, looks like Mason came to support him on his big day. Such a good friend. <sighs> well, that's it. The whole Black Ops campaign on the Wii. How will we do some multiplayer and zombies before we end this?
Just gonna find a match on multiplayer. Okay. Now, I thought I had screwed up my network settings, so I took about 30 minutes learning how to internet on the Wii. Once I got it going, no matter what I did, I would receive this error code. <laughs> Apparently, it's just too crowded right now. I've read that the servers are still online, but eh, I'm not entirely sure. So, if anyone smarter than me in the comments knows how to work this shit, then be my guest. But, uh, at least zombies doesn't need internet. Opening up the map selection, we get many options to choose from, like Kino de Toten and... Kino de Toten? Yeah, this port didn't have DLC at all. It didn't even have 5 or Dead Ups Arcade. Usually at the end of the campaign, you unlock five. Just a storm, dick. Sit down. And you can't type DOA into the terminal to unlock dead ops. But no matter, Kino is still a great map. You'd think that after playing so much of this game already, I would have mastered the controls by now. I would call myself a good zombies player. I've been one for about 10 plus years now. But oh god, is it hard to play this. I played for a whopping 25 minutes and could not get past the stage to get Jug. My first go, I died on round two just trying to knife a zombie. Doesn't help that the knife button is on the deep head. My second time around, I was doing a little better. I got myself the M14 this time. Looked up at the ceiling while reloading, which is always good was able to gather enough points to move on to the next area, even grab myself a trusty MP40. I camped a little longer so I could afford the door to the stage. Luckily the box was here so I spun it just to get some monkeys. Not what I really need right now, but that's okay. I could hit the box again, but I should be fine with the M14 and MP40 to get me to jug. And just about to get enough points and son of a bitch. Gonna try this one more time. Grabbing Quick Revive this time to hopefully extend my playtime. I begin my current strategy since that seemed to have worked. Get the MP40 back and I camp right before the stage. Trying to conserve some ammo, I switch to the M14 just for every bullet to phase through him, ending my game. Oh, and a little tidbit I forgot to mention, but for whatever reason on this version of Kino, there's a Og Walby under the turret on the stage. See, see, it's right there. But uh, anyways, yeah, I I think I'm done. So there you have it, Black Ops One for the Wii. Now, it sounds like I was making fun of it the whole time, but that's just because I know that most of you have probably already seen this or played it. So I really just wanted to show you what it was like on the Wii. But Smooth Talk, why didn't you use a Pro Controller? First, I'm not a Pro, and that's in the name. Second, I wanted to play it as God intended, with the Wii Zapper. I'm just glad I don't gotta play any more CODs on the Wii. Hello, comrade! You have some unfinished business to attend to. Wait, what? Who the hell are you? No time for that, my friend. Here you go.